This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1403. How to train if you have an injury. Should you rest instead? Part one by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com and I'm your narrator, Dr. Neil. Happy Monday and welcome to another edition of Optimal Health Daily where I read some of the best blogs covering health and fitness, just like an audiobook. And don't forget, we have a bunch of shows where we do this. Just search for Optimal Living Daily to find all of them. Now, today's post is a bit longer than what I typically narrate, so I'll read the first half today and then finish it up for you tomorrow. And with that, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. How to Train If You Have an Injury, Should You Rest Instead? Part 1 by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com There's no gentle way to say this. Training with injuries sucks. Unfortunately, that nagging shoulder pain or swelling in your knee will only get worse if you don't give it the rest that it needs. But it's tough. You've been training hard, seeing great results, and you don't want to stop now because of a little quote-unquote pain. Here are a few suggestions to keep you training while at the same time allowing you to take care of what ails you. Now, it should go without saying, the best way to handle an injury is to prevent it in the first place by always starting out with a dynamic warm-up. But that doesn't put the toothpaste back in the tube now, does it? So let's get into what you should do if you have an injury and are deciding if you should work out. If you're worried about hurting yourself while lifting, I would encourage you to check out our guide, Strength Training 101, Everything You Need to Know. All right, before I get into the training with specific injuries segment, there are a few general tips I like to give no matter what. Test all movements after an injury. First, test all movements. And by test, I mean working through as much of the range of motion of an exercise as possible with zero additional resistance and without feeling any pain. That means if your shoulder bothers you, just see if you can extend your arms all the way above your head without holding a barbell before you even consider doing a push press or a shoulder press. After that, make sure to test movements that you don't suspect will be a problem. A shoulder injury could very well make box jump sessions impossible due to the arm swing involved in the movement. Try out each movement cautiously. Something to keep in mind. Just because you have pain with a push movement does not necessarily mean you will have pain with a pull. I have had a shoulder injury where dips and push-ups were out of the question, but pull-ups were fine. And that is why you should test all movements. You may have more training options than you expect. Then again, your injury may limit movement more than you realize. Last time I'm gonna say it, test. If you have an injury, should you rest? Next up, rest. And by rest, I mean completely stop doing movements that cause you pain until you are healed. If you feel any pain, especially joint pain, during the test I just mentioned, then you should abandon that movement until the injury heals. You can't just suck it up and just grind through joint pain without hindering healing at best and causing further damage at worst. Along with rest, a recovery regimen to accelerate healing should be considered. Ideally, this would be done under the care of a physician. I have been to my doctor for injuries in the past and have found that those that use sports in the title of their practice, like sports medicine or sports therapy, do their best to keep you active. Too often overlooked components of recovery that can be controlled even if you do not seek medical care are sleep and nutrition. These things are always important when it comes to fitness, but for the swiftest recovery from injury, you need to get your food intake and sleep schedule dialed in extra tight. Sign off a fortnight an hour earlier and get to bed. I know, I know, life is cruel. Have a second helping of spinach and forego the pizza. If you want to do everything within your control to sway the healing forces in your favor, be extra diligent with your sleep and eats. Find opportunities to train in other areas. Hear that on tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled, 
How to Train If You Have an Injury, Should You Rest Instead? by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. Now, when you do what you love, like running, racing, or enjoying the great outdoors, you want to do it for life. Inside Tracker can help. They're all about optimizing your life, as I like to say on this show. Inside Tracker was founded in 2009 by leading scientists in aging, genetics, and biometrics from MIT, Tufts, and Harvard. Using their patented algorithm, Inside Tracker analyzes your body's data to provide you with a clear picture of what's going on inside you and to offer you science backed recommendations for positive diet and lifestyle changes. Then, Inside Tracker tracks your progress every day, every step of the way toward reaching your performance goals and living a longer, healthier life. Now, for a limited time, you can get 25% off the entire Inside Tracker store. Just go to insidetracker.com slash OHD. That's insidetracker.com slash OHD. And I have that linked in this episode's description. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. What I love about doing this podcast is that by sharing these articles and all of this information with you, is that we're basically giving you shortcuts, meaning you can learn from our mistakes. If and when you experience these little setbacks, you can find out from us what works best. And often, this advice isn't just based on opinion, but on scientific studies, which is super important. And the suggestions that Steve provided in the article I just read to you are fantastic. Something that I have found to be a real struggle is resting those injured areas. Once the pain seems even slightly better, I want to jump right back in and start using those injured areas again. So when Steve mentioned the importance of rest, he's absolutely right. And one thing I'll add is that after talking to a healthcare provider, consider along with rest, using ice or heat to help with recovery. Now your healthcare provider will probably have a specific regimen that they'll recommend, but a good starting point is applying 15 minutes of a cold compress to the injured area multiple times a day. That's often helpful to reduce inflammation. And again, from there, your healthcare provider will probably provide more specific information. All right, that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening every day. Thank you for sharing the show with someone. Don't forget, I'll be back here tomorrow to finish up this post. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits.